Birds! How do you make them in Blender? Well, that's a good question. First of all, I started by tracking out my scene. For these tracking markers, I used a match model of location and rotation. Don't forget to check normalize there, that helps with changing light conditions. Another thing I've been doing recently is making sure to set my camera sensor size. I use a micro four thirds camera, so that's 17.3. Also, I've been putting in my lens focal length manually, just so Blender doesn't have to solve that. But it should solve for the optical center and radial distortion, just in case. Now in the 3D view, under the camera settings, I've made sure to set up my background images as the clip that we're working with here. That helps a huge amount. Then up under the viewport overlays, I've made sure to check motion tracking so I can see all my tracking markers in 3D space. And that really helps with this next step, which is to reconstruct the basic beams. And we're going to use these as a mask. So all of these go in one collection. You right click on the collection, go down to view layer, and then set holdout. Now for the birds, I made a huge collection of birds, and this all started with one basic kind of blob of geometry, and I projected the UVs onto this picture of pigeons, and this is pretty forgiving. What we really need to get is the outline of the feathers and the basic motion of the flapping wings, which we can get with shape keys. I've got a basis key of the wings up, and then another shape key of the wings down. Then we can right click over the value of the wings down shape key and add in a keyframe. If we open up the graph editor and use N to get to the secret side panel, go under modifiers, and we're gonna want a built-in function, which gives us a sine wave by default, which is great. I'm gonna set the value offset and the amplitude to 0.5 so that it goes from zero to one rather than negative one to one. Now to change the wing flap speed, we can change the phase multiplier and to change the offset, we can change the phase offset, which comes in really handy when you have a whole collection of birds and you just wanna get some random variations. Then just set up a particle system to emit a whole bunch of particles, then set it to render as this collection of birds. And hey, get some miscellaneous rusty bits just falling out of the sky to kind of sell the effect of them jumping off of their perch up there. Now for compositing, I've set the debris and the birds to be on separate view layers just so that I can mess with the colors separately. Something I've been doing recently to get the colors to match up in compositing is just using the color dropper tool and getting a color off of the footage and then just kind of mixing that into my CG elements so they match up a little bit better. It's a little bit one dimensional, but it works for this shot. I did that also with the rubble that was falling towards camera just making sure to get two different color values so it gets darker as it gets closer to the camera. And hey, that's how I did it. Now if you're a visual effects artist like me and you kind of struggle sometimes to get life in your scenes, something I've created that's helped me out a lot is this asset pack of looping seamless smoke videos. And it's pretty easy to just throw these in a scene and get a nice smokestack or what have you going on. To get these for free, there's a link in the description. <laughs> One last thing I'd like to add is that this music has been made by Joe Latart, my brother. I have a link in the description for his YouTube channel where you can check out some more of his music.